For those, for those who don't know me, my name is Tom Homo. I'm the athletic director at BYU. At last night's game, there were some egregious and hurtful slurs that were directed at members of the Duke University women's volleyball team. I want you to know that this morning I visited with the young athlete on Duke's team and her coach. If you would have met her, you would have loved her. But you don't know her, and so you don't feel that way. BYU's athletic director, Tom Holmo there, uh, he's addressing the school's issue because the previous night, there was fans in the stands in this BYU volleyball, women's volleyball game match between BYU and Duke. One player on that team, a sophomore, her name is Rachel Richardson, she's black. Uh, she was threatened and she was called the N-word incessantly, booed every time she touched the ball, very much directly singled out by these folks there. So Tom Homo has to then talk to his fan base and be like, we don't like this. But you notice something there that he said near the end? I went and I met with this young athlete and her coach. And if you would have met her, you would have loved her, but you don't. So. The only reason you don't scream in words at sophomores in college that are playing a sport and you don't threaten to kill them is because you'd have to know them first. <laughs> not because you're a decent human being, not because you're not a racist, but because you don't know her. If you knew her, then you wouldn't threaten to kill her. Let's let him continue with this. As children of God, we are responsible. It's our mission to love one another and treat everybody with respect. And that didn't happen, we fell very short. We didn't live up to our best. I ask that everyone at all of our games that represent BYU, that you will have the courage to take a stand and be able to take care of each other. And more importantly, the guests our guests who we invite to come and play here so that we can be disciples of Christ and show it in every way. I love how Cougar Nation, how The Rock and all our fans are incredibly in support of our teams. Cheer them on as loud as you can, but do not cross the line where you would hurt or harm anyone in any way. Love you, Cougs. Thanks. Love you, Cougs, uh, no matter what you guys have been doing. Um, so maybe he's gonna try and make them better. Maybe appeal to the Christians in them, maybe to appeal to the godlike nature of their souls. We'll see if that works, but that one particular person who will get into details of what he did, uh, he did get kicked out. Let's go to details, because Lisa Pamplin, who is uh, uh, this athlete's godmother, tweeted the whole thing out and got this attention that it deserved. She said this, my goddaughter is the only black starter for Duke's volleyball team while playing yesterday. She was called an N-word every time she served. She was threatened by a white male that told her to watch her back going to the team bus. A police officer had to be put by their bench after it happened over and over and over and over again. She continued on and she said this, not one freaking adult did anything to protect her. I'm looking at you BYU, you allowed this racist behavior to continue without intervening. Apologizing to her parents <laughs> after the fact is not enough. She will soon be resharing her story, which we do have as well. But first, Rachel's mother. Had some more details of exactly what is that happened. I want you guys to put yourself in this position. Remember, you're a sophomore in college. Maybe you're playing on this stage. Maybe you're an athlete. Maybe you're not. Even more so if you're not, because maybe you don't get this kind of attention. But think about this scenario. Gloria Richardson, who's Rachel's mother, told NBC News that her daughter called her crying Friday evening. To have our strong, independent daughter call and cry, it hurt. She didn't feel safe. She was incredibly fearful, is what her mother said. It was just really frightening for her. Here, you have over 5,500 people. At this game, all in blue, and she just felt singled out. And aside from the N-word, she got constant booze whenever she served. Her white teammates didn't get that. Her back was against the fans, and all she hears is her name and the N-word. She didn't turn around. The other black girls felt unsafe and they were crying is what Gloria said as well. The black team members felt threatened and also singled out. Now Rachel, who's an outside hitter, eventually got to meet with the BYU athletic director who we just heard from uh, and said that the suspect had been identified and was described as not a BYU student, but a guest of someone else. 
She was also sure that it was uh, that it was one person who said the slur. Again, that's according to Gloria. Uh, I'm gonna get to the last things that Rachel said in response, but um, uh, David, I, I, I guess I want. <laughs> I'm not sure where you can jump in on this, but there's so much ridiculousness here from the athletic director, who maybe I think appears to feel like he's trying to do something positive, but maybe is still missing the point. Yeah, and to me, the point is, look, it's understandable in this day and age, there's always gonna be some knucklehead, some racist who's gonna show up at some event. But the fact that this person is allowed to say it over and over without having a bunch of people tackle that guy and drag that person out of the game, that's what's so frustrating. It's not just about one person, it's about the entire reaction. Everybody had a responsibility the moment they heard something inappropriate to go over to that guy to grab him by the collar and drag him the hell out of there. The fact that this didn't happen and he was allowed to do this over over and over again, that is a pox on the entire BYU crowd. Yeah, I mean, if any time a police guard has to be put by the bench, that action happened. That means they knew what was going on, but he remained. I, I, I don't get that. But there were people who were complaining about the lack of intervention from uh, team uh, coaches, maybe some of the teammates that weren't targeted, fans that were maybe there for Duke, or even the fans and also the base, as you point out, that were BYU. Um, Rachel actually did respond to that. This is her, first off, let's look at an image of her lengthy message that she did put out about what happened and how she felt and who she really is, which I think is very um, important to read. There's this last part that I did want to point out though. Um, in response to people saying that how, you know, what all that happened to her and no one protected her. This is, this sticks out to me. She goes, I understand some people would have liked more to happen in this moment. Let's just graphic eight, you guys. Uh, such as an immediate protest and refusal to play on. Although the heckling eventually took a mental toll on me, I refused to allow it to stop me from doing what I love to do and what I came to BYU to do, which is play volleyball. I refused to allow those racist bigots to feel any degree of satisfaction from thinking that their comments had gotten to me. So I pushed through and finished the game. Therefore, on behalf of my African American teammates and I, we do not want to receive pity or to be looked at as helpless. We do not feel as though we are victims of some tragic unavoidable event. We're proud to be young African American women, and we're proud to be Duke student athletes, and we're proud to stand up against racism. I think that's important to point out because, yes, I do think we should feel some kind of empathy towards her, sympathy towards what happened, and also the situation she was put in. But she does want you guys to know, I'm not gonna let these folks get to me, and I love that part. And I'm yeah, not just a like victim; I'm strong, you know. Yeah, her strength is inspiring in the way that she handled this. I mean, she shouldn't have to deal with this in the first place, but to say, look, I don't I don't need pity. I'm strong enough, I got through it. But again, to me, the issue is not her <clears throat> and her admirable strength. The issue is what is the weakness in those BYU fans mm -hmm. who felt like they had to sit on their hands and just let this person continue to shout this nonsense without going over and, and grabbing that person. That's what I just don't get. If you hear somebody, if you see somebody doing something inappropriate, all of us have responsibility to say, you better knock that out or else I'm gonna drag your out of here. And the fact that that didn't happen, that is beyond disturbing. 